Hello, welcome back. I'm Ben Fisher, tattoo artist and owner here at Inkrush. Firstly, I want to quickly give you a breakdown of today's lesson. The lesson will be broke down into two parts, theory and practical. Now, the aim of this course is to get you to level a tattooing that you want to achieve. And to do this, it's important that you follow along to both parts. We all digest information in different ways. So some of you will find listening and the theory part more beneficial, while others will prefer practical side of things. But by focusing on both, naturally, you're going to progress a lot faster. So we're going to be covering how to tattoo the straight line, how to do it correctly from hand, machine positioning and angles, to hand speed and how to enter and leave skin. Following that, we're going to go through a simple exercise to put the whole thing into practice and start your tattooing journey the correct way. So I personally think line work is massively important and if it's not done correctly, then it stands out like a sore thumb and it can completely ruin a tattoo. However, when it is done to a high standard, then it can make the simplest of tattoos look super crisp and super smooth. Just a quick little reminder before we start, I've never worked a single day since I've become a tattoo artist because I absolutely love what I do. Now, although you're just starting out or relatively new to tattooing and still in that beginner's learner phase, the most important thing is to not stress and just enjoy the whole process. Now, some of you are gonna get this instantly, but the majority are gonna struggle and not be very good at this very beginner's stage. But that's the whole reason for this course. Just enjoy the process and by the end of course, I think you're gonna be quite shocked just how much you improve and even more shocked at the level of tattooing that you actually reach. So let me go over a few tips with the on whiteboard. Now, as I'm going through these, try to understand what I'm saying, but at the same time, don't overthink it and make it more complicated than what it is. Just accept what I'm saying. And when we're going over this again with machine in his hands, then it'll all become crystal clear. And as you progress through course, it'll naturally become like second nature to you. So let's get to learning. Okay, so when we're talking about tattooing a, a line, a straight line, in particular for this lesson, there's five things that I want you to always have in the back of your mind and be thinking about. The first one is A to B, one motion and practice. Now I'm gonna go through these in detail, but just jot these down. Number two, machine angles, how you're holding machine. Number three, in and out at skin. Number four, speed. And number five, stretch. So if you've got all them jotted down, we'll go through each one individually just to make sure. So for instance, number one, A to B, one motion and practice. So if, if we're wanting to do a line from there to there, what I mean by one motion and practice And say that's your ma machining and hopefully that's clear. You can see it's a side on view. So we're going from point A to point B. We're wanting to do that in one pass. What we're not wanting to do is get halfway and then have to stop to put more ink in. Uh, Rinse, rinse your machine. As goal for this lesson is to go from point A to point B in one smooth motion. So you're wanting to go in the skin, across. You're not wanting to have a break and then have to join back in that line. So we're just wanting to go in, across, and that's done. By practicing, what I, what I mean is when you've got the machine in your hand and it's 
actually doing it or on the practice skin that we're going to do in second part of this is just have a dry run with machine running just practice your hand movement to get your hand going in that direction and this is really useful and it's something that I do regular you see when you're tackling sometimes you'll reach a certain point and your hand is uncomfortable to finish that line so if you just have a little practice run without putting machine or needle into the skin. That's a really good tip. Second thing, machine angles. Now we're just, we're gonna be going over these, but when we're doing it in second part and you're actually seeing it rather than just listening to it, I think that's where most seers are gonna get most benefit, but it's really good to have a, an understanding so machine angles, if that's surface of your skin. Now we've got two views here, hopefully you can see them. This one is looking at it straight on, and that's a side angle. So both of these, whether it's upright or tilted back, or from front position, whether it's straight down front skin or at an angle, make a huge difference of how the needle goes into the skin. So I'm just going to demonstrate that. So if you're looking at a machine straight on and the needle's going to hit the skin, the needle is going to penetrate the skin there and go straight in. So where it places the ink in the skin is directly beneath the entry point. So once that heals and you get rid of this, and the surface of the skin renews, the particles of ink underneath the skin are exactly where they want to be. Now, if we turn it to an angle, the entry point is still the same, where the needle punctures the skin, so to speak, but it's coming at an angle, and it's gonna disperse the ink underneath the skin in a totally different place. So once that skin all heals, the entry point is the same as before, but the ink has been deposited in a different location underneath the skin. This is really important. This is why a lot of people, the line work is really crisp. And then if they change angle of the machine, it then looks like blowouts or lines get thicker or when they're going around curved lines, it almost gives it like a 3D look. It starts one thickness and then gets thicker. This is because the changing angle of the machine and it's depositing ink in a different location to where it enters the skin because it is at that angle. So same again, if we're front view, if we tilted machine to that side, it's gonna enter the skin at the same point, but then the needle's gonna deposit ink over here. Once it heals, The ink is in a different location. So you always want to, later on in course, we're gonna be using this to our advantage when we're using shading techniques and whip and just smooth back and forth. All this is useful stuff, but for doing a crisp, neat line, a straight line, from front position, we're always wanting to be in that upright position. Now, if we were to look at that upright position side on it doesn't matter how far you tilt the machine back whether it's going in at 90 degrees which is going to deposit the ink directly under or even if you angle it it's still gonna leave the ink in this position from the front view but from the side view if our line starts here and we're at too much of an angle it's going to enter the skin where we want him but it's going to deposit the ink away from the start of the line. Why do you think this is important? Well, this is why a lot of tattoos, once they've healed, sometimes the lines don't look like they meet each other. And a lot of that is because of this very reason. So that angle, when you first start the line, ideally, it needs to be more in an upright position. So it deposits, deposits the ink 
underneath the entrance point. And then as you start drawing your line, you can get your hand at more of an angle for more comfort. And it also helps ink retain under skin a bit better if you do go in at a slight angle. So that points a front and side view. Just, you don't have to fully understand it at this point. We are going to be going over and over and over this and using all these different angles to our benefit when we're wanting different techniques. But at the moment, just remember that depending on the angle that you have your machine from a front view, it's going to deposit the ink not in line with where you want it. And also from this angle, which we're going to cover again, in a second, bullet number three, how it enters and leaves skin. And just remember, that also is going to make a difference to how the lines heal. Now, I don't expect you to fully understand this straight away, but like I said before, it's not important that you fully understand it. Just accept what I'm saying. And later on, when we're going over these again and again and again, using different techniques, it'll make it all make 100% sense. <clears throat> so number three, in and out at skin. Well, we'll use this again. So that's your skin. We're wanting to do a line from A to B. We're wanting to do it in one motion. Now, how we enter skin determines where it's going to leave that ink. So ideally, we want to go in quite sharp at a 90 degree angle to start with, and then gradually come across and as we're leaving the skin, we want to leave the skin in the same manner. We don't just want to pull it out instantly. We want to smoothly go into the skin, draw us line, and then gradually come out. I've just wiped half the board off, do apologise. So again, I don't expect you to understand it straight away, but you don't want to stab it into the skin. Everything wants to be a smooth, fluid motion. So you want to go in the skin, smooth, and then exit the skin in the same way. So next one, number four is speed. Now what I mean by this is the, the speed in which you move. But everything is gonna come into play with this one because the speed's gonna change depending on what needles that you use, depending on how fast you as a person, a tattoo artist, moves your hand. Everybody's different. So you can't just say, run your machine at this speed and move your hand this fast because I might move my hands faster than tattooists down the road. They might run their machines totally different to me. But the principles are the same. So if this is your skin, Just imagine a tattoo needle, it goes in, your hand's moving, it comes out, in, out, in. And that's why you want to move your hand at a constant speed, so it's entering and leaving the skin the same distance apart. Now if the machine were running at that exact same speed but I were moving my hand faster, that gap is going to be further apart and that's going to give you a broke up line. So you want to move your hand nice and slow to get a nice smooth line. If you move too fast it gives you a stipple effect which later on again all these are not right or wrong because we're going to use that concept later on to create a different shading effect, which later on, of course, we're going to be doing full tattoo designs using just that one method.
just with the liner and doing all lines and shading with one needle to create a really nice effect using this concept. What happens if you go too slow, if you're running your machine at the same speed but you're going really slow like a snail? Well, needle's just going to be going, so let me wipe this off for you. So if we're going to go really slow, it's going to be going in, barely moving, in, 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 in. Which, yeah, you're going to get a really solid line, but it's just going to tear that skin up because it's basically going to be going in and out, in and out at the same place, which is just going to cause trauma to skin, scarring, and it's just going to trash your tattoo. And I don't panic about that you're going to find out what speed and what machine and what speed to run your machine at as we progress through this course because each and every one of you is going to be different. I run my machine and my hand speed totally different to any other artist that I know. Nobody is the exact same so don't listen to people that say you've got to do it this way. You'll find out which, right, which way is right for you. But that's what we're after. To do a straight line, it's just a nice consistent speed, not too fast, not too slow, which in second part of this course, I'll show you how I do it. And you'll find if you're going too slow or too fast, you'll notice the difference and you'll just adjust accordingly. So that's how your hand speed and machine speed could affect how needle enters your skin and how it creates a line. The next thing is stretch now when you're stretching skin it is massively important i'm just going to quickly show you why if that's a flat piece of skin and our needle enters there when it forces on skin what do you think is going to happen the skin doesn't just stay there it's not a rigid thing it moves it bounces up and down so as you need needle it skin the skin moves slightly now if you're not pulling that skin tight that bounce will be inconsistent which means the needle is going to a different depth each time it goes in and out because the skin is bouncing so the idea with the stretch is that you stretch the skin tight enough to keep it in place as flat as possible. So every time that needle goes in and out, in and out, in and out, it's going to the same depth. Now this is another quick thing. The depth is something that I see on other courses or YouTube channels that You've got to go this deep, have your needle hung out by a quarter thick. I've never heard as much rubbish. Everybody's skin is different and different parts of body, the skin is different thicknesses. So I'm going to go over a technique with you that helps you find the correct distance, no matter who you're tattooing or where on the body that they're tattooing. But I think every artist will agree, them first five, ten minutes of tattooing, is basically just getting a feel for that customer's skin. You'll find out how deep you need to go in certain areas and that'll constantly change if you're tattooing the elbow. It's completely different to tattooing somebody's chest. When you're tattooing facial areas, especially, for instance, cosmetics, doing somebody's eyebrows, it is super, super thin skin. You're going nowhere near as deep to get the exact same effect as what you would on somebody's back or somebody's arm or calf. It's all different. So if you know a technique to make sure that no matter who you're tattooing or where you're tattooing them, you're always getting the correct depth, rather than just sticking to, you need to go in this deep, because that is wrong. All you're going to do is, in some areas you're not going to go deep enough, and in some areas you're going to go miles too deep and just cause massive damage. So there are your five points that I just want you to remember for this lesson. We haven't gone through anything with machine design, but we're going to do that next. So if any of that didn't make sense because it's just on a board, then don't worry, we're going to be going through it all again with machine in his hand and actually doing lines and putting it all into practice. So definitely by end at next lesson, you'll feel a lot more confident 
and have a proper understanding and have done tons and tons of perfect straight lines. So if you've not already got them down, just quickly jot them down now. Number one, A to B. You want to do it in one motion and practice before you do it with machine. Number two, don't forget your machine angles. The angle in which it goes into the skin, you want it to deposit the skin. Sorry, you want it to deposit the ink in the right place. If you go in at an angle, remember, the ink's gonna be deposited at an angle as well. Number three, the angle in which you enter and leave skin, massively important. You don't want your lines to, once they're healed, not meet where they're supposed to meet because you've come out at too much of an angle and it's tapered off or you've gone in too sharp and left a splodge. Next thing, four, make sure your hand speed is relevant to what you want it to be and to, for you to get that nice line. Everybody's gonna be different, there's no right or wrong. If you've got a fast hand, you're gonna run your machine a bit faster, otherwise you'd end up overworking it. If you've got a really slow hand, you'd slow your machine down a little bit. But you're gonna find out what's comfortable for you over the next few weeks, and then for the next couple of months, you're gonna really work and progress on that. And then last, number five, really important, make sure you stretch the skin. Now that's gonna be hard, over these next few months because we're going to be doing everything on practice skin. It's really hard to stretch practice skin because obviously it's not real. However, just always have it in the back of your mind. Get that hand in a position where in real life scenario you're going to be stretching skin and just have that in the back of your mind at all times. I hope that all that made sense and you now understand the theory behind doing a straight line correctly. In the second part of this video, we're going to be putting the whole thing into practice. So if you are still a little unsure, don't worry. This is the first lesson. And the concepts that you've been explained will be going over and over again throughout this entire course until it becomes like second nature for you. That being said, well done. And thank you for staying engaged. And I'll see you in the second part of this lesson.